okay so good day once again and um, welcome to talk your talk audio now the topic of this short audio clip is whites would always be whites okay now this is something I always say that those people who we encountered in straight up slavery those who we meet in today are not different to them they just doing their thing in a more refined manner exactly what what's happening in slavery they're doing their thing differently now based on the different equipments and the tools that they have currently okay their mindset are basically the same anyway let's get into it so there is this we we had this study right there was a study i think it was a buzzfeed study that white folks have been white folk for a long time and that ain't changing anytime soon a white millennials say any different than the ancestors okay so let us find out by this study which has been done so let us begin so i will read the study and that will be the video okay committed to investigating examining and representing the african-american male men and manhood by offering commentary regarding the status of black men and black manhood as it relates to african-american manhood race class politics and culture from an educated and authentic african-american perspective aimed at improving the plight of american african-american men african-american manhood in regards to politics culture education and social matters white folks have been white folk for a long time and that ain't changing anytime soon white are white millennials any different than their ancestors let us find out after you have lived enough life to look back several decades there is nothing more humorous than the the world view of those coming up behind you optimism is the sole purview of the youth for good reason they have often not met the light dimming characters known as disappointments disenchantment and frustration right so they are innocent basically considering that none of us were born old it is a weird sensation for me to hear successful generations of black america share their unbridled optimism regarding the future of race relations i remember that place very well i can recall nearly four decades ago as a middle scholar asserting to my favorite middle school teacher that my generation would subdue racial bigotry the alluded to exchange began with me sharing an unshakable belief that the racial divide would disappear because of the increasing frequency and decreasing distance between my white peers and black youth. My amused teacher simply looked at me over his horn rimmed glasses and offered the following white folk have always been white folk ain't never gonna be much change in them 
you come and visit me when you get to my age and tell me what you have learned about white folks being white folks. This ominous warning returned to the forefront of my mind when I came across a recently released study that offered a glimpse regarding race, millennials, and how they chose political candidates. According to the reference BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed News poll, the following is true about white millennial voters, that is young people. Keep in mind, these are young people who have yet to reach their 40th birthday and have attended desegregated schools their entire lives. Most people, myself included, believed that such exposure would have a definitive impact on how they view and thereby cause distinct lines between how they view the present world versus how their parents and grandparents viewed the world where they live. The following data proves that we were wrong. So here we go. 36% of millennials prefer a white political candidate if all else is equal. 42% of millennials that consider themselves Republicans admit that they would choose a white candidate over an equally qualified non-white one. 22% of millennials within the Democratic Party shared that they would choose a white candidate over an equally non-qualified candidate. Although it is not difficult for me to admit that my prior position was a flawed one, I can tell you that I will not be seeking out my middle school teacher to provide him with, a, with an opportunity to grin at me and say, I told you that white folk have always been white folk. Ain't never gonna be much changing them. It is disappointing that millennials, that is between ages 22 to 37, who have been exposed to non-whites in a host of arenas from school to marriage have not abandoned the racial bigotry and prejudice that served as hallmarks of the ancestors' generation. The previously referenced study determined that millennials' racial bigotry is nearly identical to that of the ancestors who believed in racial separation and the Jim Crow segregation, segregation, segregationist social order. Even the most optimistic among us have to be disturbed by poll results that prove nothing has changed in either the hearts of or minds of white millennials. If one did not know any better, they would be cons convinced that white please, that black blacks abandon the infatuation with race makes them hypocrites, unwilling to apply that same advice to their political choices. If the BuzzFeed news poll is accurate, it is not a stretch to assert 
that the vast majority of whites sole political priority is to extend the privilege position by any means necessary even if it means applying an achibonka style racial bigotry this by dr james thomas jones III, manhood race and culture 2018 right so let's read this excerpt here manhood race and culture greatly appreciate your part participation on this site we would love to receive your feedback regarding the site we are dedicated to working towards the uplift of the race by any means necessary including but not limited to education so if you want information there is the site manhood race and culture right you google it look for it and there you go so my people so that's the end of the excerpt so as i always say in videos that these people are never gonna change these people will always be who they are it doesn't matter how much they green with you now the thing about it is that they could operate with you lighter than before like smiling with you or maybe even socializing with you but they won't hesitate to shoot you down or your son or your child or your relative on the street they wouldn't hesitate to do that right and even if they some of them smile for you and they don't actually kill you in their mind their mindset towards you is basically the same mindset that existed in their four in their four parents or their their ancestors you might say okay and this is real there are some who would try their best to try to overcome it and recreate within themselves a new mind like our elohim said and that is the only way they could change they have to renew their mind you know they have to create within themselves a new heart and a new mind as a matter of fact our father elohim have to do that on their request but until such time they would always be like their ancestors the truth of the matter is if you plant a pumpkin seed that you had for 400 years or 300 years when it grew it would grow into a pumpkin it's as simple as that right so there would always be all the characteristics of the pumpkin in its seed it doesn't matter how many years pass on that seed we have to learn that so let us not kid ourselves or fool ourselves thinking that oh they smile with me or they give me a job and they pay me x amount of money means that they have changed and they are not like the ancestors they are okay and the only how as i said these people could change right is when they accept with all their hearts and their minds and their body and their soul and everything our elohim and they are made new until such time these people are your slavers in the flesh so be at peace be blessed i will most definitely see you in a v in another video So, give thanks and praises to the Most High, Yahuwah, and don't let the enemies deceive you with a smile.
or with some monies. Be blessed and be wise.